you're very welcome to this episode of Dark Vanishings. I hope you're keeping well wherever you are in the world. Today's episode is about the mysterious disappearance of Claudia Lawrence and I'd really like to thank the viewer of the Dark Vanishings channel who made this recommendation. Many thanks. I'm also currently researching the case of Elizabeth Barossa and also Magdalena Zook and also Elaine Park. So do look out for those episodes. They will be on their way very shortly. Much appreciated again for those suggestions. So let's get started. Claudia Lawrence was born on the 27th of February in 1974. She was living in the Hayworth area of York where she owned a house when she suddenly vanished. The last time that anybody saw Claudia was on the 18th of March in 2009. She was just 35 years of age when she vanished. Claudia grew up in the town of Moulton in Yorkshire. Her father was a successful solicitor and her mum a member of the Moulton Town Council. Her mother would eventually go on to become Lord Mayor. Claudia and her sister Ali had an idyllic childhood. Her mother would describe their childhood as being very outdoors orientated, a lot of outdoor activities. Claudia and her sister Ali had ponies uh, and their childhood was, you know, carefree. They were doted upon uh, by their parents, Claudia and her sister. Uh, her parents, obviously, because they had good jobs, were in a position to privately educate their children. Uh, so Claudia did receive a private education. But most importantly, Claudia and her sister were deeply loved by their parents. After Claudia left school, she decided to train to become a chef. And at the time of her disappearance, she was working in Goodridge College in the University of York. Claudia Lawrence was an incredibly bubbly and friendly person. She would have a hello and a kind word for everybody. Uh, she had many friends, not just in uh, Yorkshire, but also in places like Cyprus, where she liked to holiday. And she also loved to go to the Nags Head, her local pub, which was literally just a few doors up from her house. Claudia's parents would go on to divorce. The divorce would be acrimonious and eventually they would cease to speak entirely. They're both pictured here outside of Claudia's home. Claudia's father, Peter, continued to make the mortgage payments on his daughter's house. Even though he was a successful solicitor, this was a huge financial commitment. And he did this so that his daughter would have a roof over her head if she one day returned. It's such a sweet and a beautiful gesture by Claudia's father. Both of her parents have just been, you know, inspirational in terms of, you know, their devotion to finding out what uh, happened to their daughter. On the 18th of March, when Claudia was last seen, she was walking to and from work. Her car was in the mechanics. Here we see her in a still of the CCTV footage at around 10 to 3 in the afternoon on the 18th of March. The 18th of March was the last day Claudia was ever seen. You can see there on the left a white vehicle. And I want to point something out about this vehicle later. And I also want to mention something about the car. Uh, her own car, actually, and I, I look forward to your comments uh, and see what you think about the theory that I have in relation to her car. Um, but more on that later. She's almost uh, at home and a neighbour stops and uh, drops her the rest of the way. Now, we do know that she spent the evening in her house. She spoke to her mother around eight o'clock. Claudia described the programme location location that she was watching on the television. Her mother could hear it in the background. Their call finished at around 8.23 p.m. And Claudia said that she was going to bed early because she had to get up at 5 a.m. to walk out to the uh, college or the university where she worked. Um, she did receive a text at 9.15, which she didn't reply to. It was from Steve in Cyprus, her friend. Uh, much has been made of this that perhaps, you know, something happened to her in the house at that point, some sort of foul play. I personally think that she most likely fell asleep. She was getting up at 5 a.m. because her car was in the garage, walking, you know, long distances to and from work. And she was probably just tired. Uh, Claudia's father believes that Claudia did go to work on the 19th of March. Her rucksack was missing from the house along with her mobile phone and in her rucksack was her chef's uniform. Uh, additionally, there were breakfast plates, etc. And I personally agree with Claudia's father. It does look as if she did set off for work on the 19th of March. 
As the police began their investigations, they noticed a man in the alleyway area behind Claudia's house on the 18th of March at around 7.15 p.m. You can see him here almost in the centre of the still of the uh, CCTV footage dressed uh, in dark clothing. He's also wearing a backpack. You see him on the CCTV footage entering the alleyway, then he comes out, he returns to the alleyway and then emerges again. As he's walking away from the alleyway area, he suddenly stops when he sees a man passing uh, wearing a white uh, sweatshirt. I've pointed everybody out with red arrows in the CCTV footage. It's obvious that he doesn't want to be seen. He sort of hangs back and is quite shocked to see somebody passing. Uh, I think that this is very significant and that this CCTV footage is linked to Claudia's disappearance. You'll notice in the top left hand corner there are also uh, what appears to be some maybe adolescents hanging around outside of a house. So I'm sure the police uh, were keen to speak to them and uh, track, track them down for their uh, uh, opinion. More disturbing still is that about seven minutes past five on the morning of the 19th of March, the man returns to the alleyway area again of Claudia's property at the back of Claudia's property. I've pointed him out there uh, in the CCTV footage. And this is again, uh, very concerning. And it is obvious that it is the same man. Claudia's father was adamant that Claudia had gone to work on the 19th of March. Her rucksack was missing, which contained her chef's clothes and also her mobile phone. There were breakfast plates in the kitchen. I agree with Claudia's father. Consequently, police had a look at the CCTV footage of Melrose Gate Road, the road that we saw Claudia on the previous afternoon where I pointed out the white vehicle, uh, just to see had she definitely, you know, headed off to work. So we do see here a woman in the distance. It appears to be a woman who's quite petite and small. We do know that Claudia had a very small build. Could this potentially have been Claudia? And here on the left, we see a man who I think bears quite a resemblance to the man that we saw um, loitering in Claudia's alleyway the previous evening and also uh, that morning at around seven minutes past five. So he was certainly ideally placed to follow Claudia to work. Now the man uh, looks taller and thinner, I think, in this particular still of the CCTV footage than in the stills that I showed you of the man loitering in the alleyway. But that could just be purely the angle of the camera. The jacket appears similar as do the trousers. I thought that I could almost see a tuft of uh, a lightish sort of hair again. But I can't be definite on that. The footage is so grainy because the footage was so grainy. The police couldn't be absolutely sure that this was definitely Claudia uh, who had headed off that morning to work. Perhaps she met foul play before she even got to this point or she took a different route. But it's certainly pretty compelling. I think I think Claudia most likely would have probably walked along this uh, route, but it's certainly food for thought. Witnesses would see a woman arguing with a man. The woman had uh, mousy brown hair with a tall man wearing a hoodie who was smoking a cigarette with his left hand at a passover. It was sort of over an underpass at about 5.35 a.m. Now, this timeline would have tied in with where Claudia would have expected to be and had she taken this route to work. And this man sort of does look tall and thin. He's wearing dark clothing. Is it conceivable that this man caught up to her? He was harassing her, following her, and that they got into some kind of an altercation. Um, it's certainly food for thought. So in this CCTV footage, which was captured by a bus on the 18th of March, the last day that Claudia was seen, you know, living her normal life, we see that at a minute past nine on that day, there was a white vehicle identical to the vehicle that we saw earlier in the day when Claudia was posting the letter parked outside of Claudia's house. Again, it's about a minute past nine was the driver of this vehicle the person who was seen loitering in her alleyway we can never be certain there were reports uh, at that time to the police that a rusty white vehicle the driver of a rusty white vehicle was attempting to you know talk to women and uh, you know was making them feel very uncomfortable so it's certainly something to consider
On the 19th of March at 5.42 a.m., a silver hatchback was also seen slowing down as it approached Claudia's house, and the police also wondered, could this have significance? So as I mentioned, witnesses said that they saw a woman with mousy brown hair at around 5.35 a.m. Uh, arguing at a sort of uh, bridge over an underpass with a tall man who was smoking with his left hand. He was also wearing a dark hoodie. He also had a, a car nearby with an open door. So it makes you wonder if Claudia had been followed on foot, perhaps this person did have a vehicle parked nearby somewhere when he did catch up to her. Um, you know, he maybe offered her a lift at that point. I, I'm not too sure. Uh, having said all of that, the CCTV footage around Melrose Gate Road catches somebody wearing a hoodie. It's a bright hoodie, however, but he does smoke with his left hand and he's actually walking in the direction of where Claudia lives. Uh, so this is quite confusing. Could there have been two men around this time, both wearing hoodies, both smoking with their left hand? I did wonder if the man who was seen talking with the woman with the mousy brown hair maybe didn't actually smoke and perhaps the witnesses actually saw this other man who was a left-handed smoker and this just you know stuck in their head you know they were probably you know going into work not paying a huge amount of attention to you know small details perhaps in some way the two men were sort of conflated together in a way uh, we'll just never know but it's just something to note that the CCTV footage did pick up somebody wearing a hoodie who was a left-handed smoker. It's been argued that Christopher Halliwell could have murdered uh, Claudia Lawrence, but Wiltshire police have come forward to say that they have CCTV footage of Halliwell getting petrol at a garage in Swindon on the 18th of March. So now to my theory, I think that Claudia was the victim of a stalker. You can see some academics listed on the right there. and There's also a link on the left and different types of stalkers are listed. So there's a rejected stalker. This is somebody who has been rejected in a romantic relationship. They don't take it very well. They continue to fixate on the person who has broken up with them. There's the resentful stalker, somebody who maybe has a grudge against somebody and, and uh, is determined to sort of get them back. There's also the intimacy seeking stalker, somebody who's really desperate for closeness, etc. There's also the incompetent stalker and the incompetent stalker is somebody who has very poor social skills, uh, finds it very difficult to get relationships with women off the ground and uh, sort of fixates on a woman in this way. And finally, there's the predatory stalker. This is somebody who identifies somebody. They don't know them, uh, but they target them and they will stalk them. It does say in the literature that there are different types of stalkers in terms of the relationship to the person who's being stalked. So there can be stranger stalkers, for example, where the stalker doesn't know the person that they're stalking at all. There can be acquaintance stalking, where it's somebody who is a sort of distant acquaintance, uh, you know, is aware of the person that they're stalking, you know, in the distance and they, they, they begin to stalk that person. And there is also uh, intimate stalking, and that's where uh, the person who's being stalked has been in a relationship uh, with the person who's stalking them. I personally feel that Claudia's stalker fell into the category of incompetent stalker or predatory stalker. And contrary to the sort of slant of the investigation and the media coverage, I don't believe that this was a married man that, uh, you know, Claudia had been involved with or a partner of a married man who was out to get her. I, I personally feel that, to the contrary, I think this is an acquaintance stalker or a, a stranger stalker, um, you know, and uh, that, that's my, my feeling on this case. And, and I'll explain to you why now shortly. I don't usually use Wikipedia in my videos, uh, even though Wikipedia, you know, is an amazing source of information. But this entry for stalking is particularly good. It has about 101 references in in the uh, Wikipedia piece, uh, mostly academic, it describes the types of victims of stalking. So you can have prior intimates, so people who've been involved romantically, etc., casual acquaintances and friends, professional contacts, workplace contacts, strangers, etc. 
One of the interesting things about the casual acquaintances and friends is that it also lists neighbour stalking and neighbours are ideally placed to stalk because they have easy access uh, to their victim. They can spy on them, they can watch them, they can follow them. And I do have a feeling that Claudia's stalker was somebody who did live in the vicinity. And so that's just something again uh, to consider and again uh, just additional food for thought. This academic article, it's a psychiatric journal, describes the behaviours of stalkers and one of the behaviours is described as shadowing the victim in the street without making actual contact, standing outside the victim's home uh, for hours at a time. The shadowing can also be done on foot or in a vehicle and it also says that the stalker can do damage to property, e.g. cars, pets, etc. Now, the reference to cars really got me thinking because I thought, hmm, Claudia's car is in the mechanics. Is it conceivable that a stalker, and I do believe that Claudia had a stalker, tampered with the car knowing that she would walk to work uh, at a time of the day when, you know, the streets are deserted. Uh, this made her very vulnerable. It made her an easy target. It's just something to consider, and I'll be interested to see your comments in the chat. Of course, we can never prove this you know, definitively, perhaps this was just a stalker and he didn't interfere with her car in any way, but it's just something to consider. This is from everydayhealth.com and it's the 10 signs that you're being stalked. Number five is called rescuing you. It says anyone can experience a flat tire or breakdown on the highway, of course, but many stalkers enjoy playing the hero. So they create situations that require you to be rescued just when they happen to be passing by. These incidents can include a suspiciously sudden flat tyre, a car that won't start or running out of gas unexpectedly. The stalker appears and gallantly changes your tyre or has a spare gas can that solves your problem. So it did get me thinking, could the stalker have interfered with Claudia's car and then be, you know, driving by to offer her a lift, knowing that most likely she was a health conscious person. She was going to walk. And of course, she was very vulnerable at 5 a.m. in the morning. It's dark. It's deserted. Um, it's something to think about. Perhaps, you know, it's just coincidence and her car broke down. But uh, it's it's amazing how many times cars and property are referenced in articles about stalking. So it, it, it did get me thinking. The search for Claudia continues. Something that does fascinate me is that suicide has never been discussed in relation to Claudia. I think that Claudia had a lot more ups and downs than perhaps her sort of sunny disposition gave away. Uh, there was a lot of criticism of Claudia for being involved with married men, but apparently she did have a breakup of a relationship at one point and her best friend Susie moved in with her for a year. So this was obviously something that was very traumatic to her and perhaps she just lost her way after this. You know, it, it was really sad to see how judgmental people were of Claudia. I mean, we just don't know, you know the full facts of her life and I think that perhaps that area of her life perhaps wasn't very satisfying you know and she was you know latching on to the wrong people perhaps she was very unhappy and that did cross my mind but I imagine that suicide was ruled out very quickly I mean she was very future focused she was planning to meet her mother for Mother's Day she was setting off for work as normal by all appearances uh, she was planning holidays I, and I also think that you know overall she loved her life you know her friends her parents she enjoyed her work and I think that you know she wouldn't have taken this course of action the police did search gravel pits about eight miles from where Claudia lived a note was found actually saying that she was in the water at the gravel pits you can see it there on the left hand side the writing is in capitals interestingly enough it's almost as if the person is trying to disguise their handwriting it does say god bless her on the right hand side God bless her it sounded like something an older person would write. Was this the parent of somebody who they knew had done this dreadful act to Claudia uh, or a relative? Or perhaps this was just a hoax and uh, this was somebody just looking for attention. We'll just never know. Ultimately, Claudia's body was not found and the search for Claudia continues. I actually tried to put side by side the image of the man who was hanging around in the alleyway on the CCTV footage on March 18th around 7.15 in the evening and also again at 5am in the morning around 5.07am with the footage of the man that's seen walking along 
uh, behind Claudia in the morning of March uh, 19th, if this is indeed uh, Claudia in the distance. And actually, the clothing is uh, quite similar and the outline is quite similar. As I said, I, I think this man in the footage um, of the morning of March 19th with potentially Claudia in the distance looks thinner and taller from this angle, but that could be just because of the camera. But there does appear to be quite a, a strong similarity, I, I think. Peter Lawrence did so much for missing people in his life. We see him here receiving an OBE from Prince William. He also was behind a law called Claudia's Law, which enabled the uh, family of missing people to take control of the missing person's financial affairs. And of course, this was very important to Claudia's father because he wished to continue the payments on her property, uh, ensure that she had a house if she did indeed return and also handle other aspects of her financial affairs. And so this is a, an incredibly deserved award for Claudia's father. Claudia's mother also appeals for help for Claudia on a consistent basis. We can see here again, you know, appealing for help 13 years after her daughter's disappearance. Claudia's parents have been nothing short of inspirational. Claudia's father would pass away without finding out what had happened to Claudia. The only compensation in his death is that he is now spared the mental anguish that he suffered in his life. And that's why I do feel that the person who perpetrated this crime is a particularly uh, selfish and uh, ruthless individual. Even in his death, Peter continued to be such a generous soul and he left 10,000 sterling to a missing persons charity. I believe that Claudia's case bears a strong resemblance to the Trevor Dealey case. There was somebody behaving suspiciously on CCTV footage. If that was Claudia going to work that day, she was being trailed by a man at not too far a distance. Like Trevor, Claudia was a very bubbly and friendly person. I was reading some really awful comments to the effect that, you know, for, you know, a solicitor's daughter, she mingled very widely. I think that it was lovely and that it was actually an attribute that Claudia had a kind word for everyone. You know, she wasn't sort of going, what's your job? Where do you live? You know, she wasn't a snobbish person, but her friendliness, like Trevor's friendliness, may have made her a target. I do believe that she was the victim possibly of a stranger or acquaintance stalker, most likely somebody from the vicinity. I don't think that it was an intimate stalker, somebody that she previously gone out with. There was no evidence of her receiving harassing texts. And there's also something from the body language of the man in the CCTV footage on the uh, evening of 18th of March and again in the morning of the 19th March that suggests a little bit more distance in the relationship. I think at the very most, it may have been somebody, you know, a very casual liaison at, at the very most. I think that the case would benefit by the insights of an international expert on stalking who could help to produce a fresh profile. And I also think that a body language expert could re-examine the footage again through the lens of sort of stalking uh, type behaviour. If you do have any facts or come across any facts um, relating to Claudia's case, you can go to missingpeople.org.uk where you can share uh, the details with the relevant authorities. And I wish Claudia's family the very best with their onward search for answers. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I love every single comment, like, new subscription. It means the world to me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Do take care and all the best.